Hi, this is Leah Myers, Myers Science Studio, and today we're going to do the little fish block. I made this one previously, it's a yellow, and this one is my second one, which is an orange. These are all for my scraps that I have in the studio, and this is a no stress uh, block. Just get two and a half inch, you can have two and a half inch strips, cut them into squares, and that's all you need. Anyway. I hope you uh, enjoy this project and let's get sewing. Okay, well, we're continuing with using scraps. Um, I, I um, iron out my scraps that are beside my sewing machine when I'm sewing and cutting. I put them all in a, a basket and then I um, iron them all and then cut them with an AccuQuilt cutter tool. You can also, like, I guess, process them by hand with cutting with a um, with a rotary cutter and a ruler, but I find that it's kind of fun to just make a bunch of squares. That way, if you're going to try a block pattern out, you can just, you know, find the right size sizes and then try the block pattern out because sometimes your first block doesn't look the best and you, you know, you have to practice the block. I'm just I turning on my iron right there. Anyway, and, but this week is the little fish. They kind of remind me of those little goldfish. A little bit and so uh, according to my pattern and I'll turn it the way I can so I can read it um, you need eight one and a half inch squares and I have them laid out here and you can see them on camera yay and then three um, three square three two and a half inch squares isn't it so small and we're gonna make half square triangles first and then we're gonna make quarter uh, quarter square triangles and then I just took these two and a half inch squares and cut them in into triangles and I have four of those and I'm making sure that's right I believe that's right there's four yep anyway so we're gonna start with the half square triangles like we did before and I'm using a leader and if you don't know what a leader is I'll explain that again a leader is a piece of fabric that you sew through and you just keep sewing. It's a little scrap and you put it in your machine and you use it as a guide. Or not a guide. You use it so that you can um, keep sewing and the stitches are tight on the very top. So if you like fed that into your machine, your feed dogs will not catch the first bit of that fabric most of the time so you'll have one or two stitches away from the edge but if you use the leader it will sew all the way to the edge and it'll have a tight a tight seam there and normally I don't worry about it uh, for a lot of my sewing like using leaders but because this block is so tiny I decided to use a leader um, because it just gives me more insurance that these that these blocks come out right. So I'm done with my last block. I'm going to sew a little bit and grab the leader again. And you can see that I've sewn quite a bit on it. And that's fine. You just keep using the same thing until it's so full. And I'm going to cut some of the strings off. It's so full that it won't easily go through your machine. And then you just stop and then cut off, cut off that last piece. And I'm chain, chain sewing. I've, I've already, I've stitched one side of that line. I'm making half square triangles. And now I'm going to stitch on the other side. So I'm going to just feed it through. And the, um, I'm going to mention that the featherweight has a, a unusually shaped foot. And I'll put a picture up there. Uh, unusually shaped foot. It has a fatter side and a skinnier side. The skinny side is an eighth of an inch. The fatter side is a quarter inch measurement. It took me quite a while to realize because um, when you're sewing a lot um, you're always looking to the right of the foot. You never think of the left of the foot. So I'm using the left side to get that quarter inch measurement on that line instead of the right side like I normally would. And so I'm, I'm done sewing on either side of that line. I'm going to grab the leader again 
and so is in the leader. I think uh, the name is because you, uh, it leads all your pieces in, maybe. I don't know how it got the name leader. Okay, my iron is hot. Put my instructions over here. And when I do have square triangles, you can get a roller and cut them. I just cut them quickly with the scissors. These scissors aren't the best, but I'll set them aside and then I'll iron them. And then I iron them open to the dark side, like a lot of, uh, and I just carefully roll it over and I make sure that the seam is, is good. And I have my wooden clapper here to keep things flatter. So when I iron it, I'll just stick the clapper on it. I'm using it because I have Kona cotton scraps here and it's so it's a little thicker material not terribly thick it's still quilting cotton of course but <laughs> when you're doing really small things it's a little thicker than a, what a batik would be batiks are thinner just because they've been processed and washed and dyed and its uh, texture is thinner. If you have a problem with the seam being too thick, the other thing you can do is uh, use a thinner thread as well. And that would work. I'm just iron these open because the next step, and I'm just going to keep using that clapper because see how this block is laying here? It's um, kind of flipping up a little bit and that's the way Kona it's just kind of stiff but it's fine I, I use it for everything um, the quilts I've made with Kona cotton they just get softer and softer as I as they age and I, I love it because there's tons of solids and I have like a chart I use you know upstairs to um, pick color sometimes. All right, so now we have the half square triangles, and we're going to cut this diagonally. You can like draw the line and then cut. I just go ahead and cut because I'm saving time. I'm going to grab a ruler and and I, you know, you cut you cut straight across up and down because you you want one quarter of that of that unit and that's where you get the quarter square triangle qst that is the abbreviation and i looked it up just to make sure i was right because i've i've sewn a, a lot i've been sewing a while but it's it's nice to like refresh your memory and so you you uh uh Make sure that the line is um, the straight across line like this, that way, from this way, is uh, straight. Like all the lines, like where the points are, you're lining up where the points are, and you're also lining up where that seam is on the ruler. And it doesn't matter where on the ruler, just a straight line on that horizontal line. And I'm just going to stack these up. So I have, so when I re-sew these, I have to, I have to sew the opposite and put opposites, opposites together like this to make the quarter square. So, and I'm just going to put these aside like together because I'm going to chain sew these together and the very last one I need I need four of those and I'm checking where all my lines are making sure that's right I'm just gonna put these over here so I need four of those together and then I need I need four, I need one, two, three, four 
single ones of these to go with the triangles. And I'll demonstrate that. That sounded a little confusing to me in my head. Anyway, but we're this is like I said, we're not we're not committing to anything. This is all using scraps. We're not going to be pressured. No, there's no pressure here. You don't have to buy extra fabric. Use whatever you have in the and then start making these little little uh, blocks. And that's what we're doing. We're just learning the techniques. And I didn't quite get through that middle part. And I, yep. Okay. So hopefully I have, I have four here. So it looks like I need one more, one more set. Okay. Oh, here's my last one it was underneath my thing so anyway i'll show you i'll demonstrate how i cut this in half thought i was missing a missing one but i'm not anyway i can show you demonstrate it with this one sorry had a little brain freeze right there and cut it in half and I make sure that that line is vertical, like the line with the seam on the roller. I line that up to the seam and then up and down, I line that up with the points up and down. For some reason, I thought I was missing a piece, but I wasn't. Oh, I like to be perfect. I want to be perfect. So match up these quarter square triangles together and these will make up the body of the fish the body which is this one and they need to match up right and then I just chain sew those and for the tails I need a, a triangle there and I just cut a two and a half inch square in a triangle shape this will be a lot bigger than this but that's all right. We're going to trim it all. And what I want to do is make this fast, fast, a fast process. Because it's scraps and we're having fun. We're not committing to a huge quilt. We're not, we're just practicing a new, te either practicing a new te technique or just having fun with our scraps. And then what I do with these is I just, with my fun scrap uh, blocks, I will set them aside for other things. I will either make little g gifts, you know, like a mug rug, which is very handy. I have a mug rug next to my computer upstairs and all my drinks and all my, co you know, coffee or water, whatever. It always goes on a mug rug. So I'm going to start with the triangles and they're bigger. So it's just, I just aim for the middle, of that triangle. It's not, it's not necessary to be perfect with it because it's bigger than the quarter square triangle. And then I, I sew a quarter inch seam and I'll move my pedal back down. I sew a quarter inch seam. Let me move this out of the way. Get that out of the way. Sew a quarter inch seam. Okay, and I just chain sew. I just chain sew this whole thing. And once you're done with the quarter square uh, triangles, and um, this is a, the one I'm working on now, has a quarter square unit, but it has a triangle on it, so it's really three. And I don't think they, they call it three square triangle. And you just sew them. It's it's super quick, and this has a, a little bit more difficulty, like as as far as just doing half half square triangles, because you're putting more seams in the middle. Like there are two seams in the middle, 
and you just want to nest them so that they match. And when I do tiny sewing, it is a challenge for me to sew straight sometimes. So I have to be real careful. So just take your time. You're having fun. All right. Maybe if it will catch. There we go. Yeah, you can like put this on a pocket. Like if you're making a bag, you can put this like on the pocket, on a bag, or pocket on a shirt, who knows, whatever you like. Yeah, there, it's just scrap, we're just using scraps. I was, I was kind of scared a minute there. I thought I'd written the pattern wrong. But I had a piece hiding underneath my clapper, which is, oops, okay, don't forget the later. I always want to. I am not someone who uses laters that often, but I will. When you find a purpose for something. Okay, let me pause right here and let's start, and I'll, and I'll iron these out flat and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm finishing ironing some of these pieces when it has that solid triangle on the quarter square uh, unit I iron towards the um, triangle because it has less bulk and that's just a tip and my on my example I pressed open but some of my pieces did not make it to the I mean, it's not exactly perfect, like this one's lost its point. So I'm going to just keep going with the ironing to the one side, because I think that I'm more successful when I do that. And I use the clapper. When I'm using a clapper, whenever I iron a piece, I stop. And, and don't forget your piece that's underneath it, which I did, which is fine. And what happens is, while that is cooling, it will uh, further set those fibers into the into the fold that I create with the heat. It'll cool, it'll cool slowly and it'll be flatter. I'm using that um, technique because I'm using Kona cotton and I just want it to behave. Also, before we start, I want to show you on this uh, Creative Grids. Uh, ruler. It has a 45 degree angle here, right here. And let me make sure, yeah, it has a 45 degree angle. And there's on that uh, 45 degree angle, there are little tick marks that have little corners. You're going to use that to measure the uh, perfect center of that block. And I'll show you how. So I take, I'm going to grab this piece because I don't want to forget him. I forgot, I thought I had written the pattern wrong. I'd had to start all over and I'd left the piece underneath there. I don't know if that's happened to anyone else, but. So this is an inch and a half. I'm gonna go to the inch and a half black portion of the Creative Grids ruler. And I like Creative Grids a lot. Sometimes the bubbles get in the way of where I need to measure and I'll grab another ruler. So these little tick marks, I like to count, and six, uh, and six uh, little tick marks, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's my center. And to verify, just count backwards from the inch and a half line here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, it's in the center. And that is how you square this up. You do it from the center and square out and make sure that this 45 degree angle right here is going along those those triangles there so that you get it perfectly square and then just trim them and we'll do all of them and I I am not gonna uh, do open seams I have it in my pattern that I do but I did on my first one, and my first block did not come out the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to count them again. One, two, three, four, five, and there's six. 
Well, I want perfect centers here. On that inch and a half. There we go. Yep. So there's my first one, and I'll put him here. And then I will get this one. And I, it also has a center, and I'm just going to use the same method. Put that diagonal line that way, this one on the top. Measure, perfect. And I count six little tick marks. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Your eye will kind of automatically gravitate towards that and measure that uh, diagonal line here. And I'm using the smallest triangle. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. There we go. And make sure you have everything right. You can use a rotating mat if you like. <laughs> But these are tiny. We're not doing a million of them. We're just going to do a few because this, this is all this is all practice. And then again, one, two, three, four. Five. Yep, that's right in the middle and my diagonal line. So that you make sure this is square. This comes out square, and you have it perfectly centered in the middle. Right? Perfectly centered. And there's the headpiece right there. And then we just continue, we just continue, um, we just continue to set these little fish in the right places and then we'll just chain sew them all together. Okay, now we're ready to chain sew. Put my stuff over here. Don't need to cut anymore, we're done with cutting. And so you see that we have our block done and now we just need to sew it and I just get two at a time I I do this a little differently I like to get all of the solid ones that aren't pieced together first but and yeah I like to get the solid ones that aren't pieced together first it's just however whatever order will keep you like if you want to do this quickly, whatever order is is more pleasing to you. But I like to I like to get these um, solid pieces out of the way. And on the second row, the second row or third row, whatever, um, I'm using the solid one and the next piece next to it, just so that I I know where it goes. But I like to I like to get the solid non-pieced ones out of the way and I'm going to take these two and I've laid my block out so I can put these guys back in the same or in the order they're supposed to be in which would be great <laughs> and there's the other set see just do the solid ones first that's how I do it you can do it however you like I I tend to get confused and uh, sew thing from. So when I grab my later again. Grab it. Yeah, I got a cut on my hand. I had a mishap. <laughs> anyway, I hate I hate having injuries. Okay, and I'm gonna just go ahead and iron these. Iron these. For now, I'm not going to worry which side's what side or whatever at this point. I can I can re-iron it and change it, but my first block I, I did print I did do uh, open seams and I have it in my pattern. I think that will help people, but I for me myself my block did not come out the way I way I wanted it to. Okay. And another way is that you could just finger press them and then put them down here and then iron them more permanently later. 
All right, so I'm gonna now I'm gonna do the piece ones. I'm gonna pick up these two if I can, and just keep going, keep sewing, and keep them really straight. And I'm not pinning; they're really tiny. I don't have to pin this because it's so little. It's and a quarter inch stain. I have that first excuse me, that first mark on this sewing machine right here is the quarter inch mark. So I'm going to grab the next two right here. It's not exactly like picking them up and sewing them in a row like normal. I just found that this was easier for me to keep track. And the other uh, thing that will help while you sew these little units is you can make your stitch length a little smaller, like 1.75. And there's um, a little seam. I want it to be flat. And you just keep going, taking your time. These are just fun blocks. It's no stress. If you make this block and it did not come out right, no big deal, you know? Just uh, don't don't worry about it. This is fun. This is out of your scrap pile. It's something that you'll use one day. Maybe you'll use it on the back of a quilt, make it a, make it a signature block maybe, you know, where you can put a label next to it or around it. These are just fun things. This is for you to have fun. Sometimes I, when I'm in the middle of a real serious project, I like to have fun projects to fall back on um, because my, my serious project is taking a lot of time. And sometimes when you're um, taking a long time to make a project, you'll lose interest in that project or you'll get sick of it. Lots of people will be like, you know, I, I, when I see it online, I'll say, they'll say, I'm so tired of this, of this quilt, you know? Well, maybe if you did something like, um, fun in the meantime, it, you know, maybe you would have had more, like if you gave yourself a little break making something else. All right. And I'm not real sure. I'll, I'll nest my seams the way I'm supposed to. Okay, make sure my fish aren't upside down. And then I just continue. Continue to sew, chain sew this whole thing. And this is not a hard block. The first time you make it may take a little, a little longer, but you'll, you'll get through it. You know, it's, it's not, it's supposed to be fun. And if you have a lot of scraps or you say, I want to make a lot of fish blocks and I want them to be all different colors. That's fine too. I'm just doing this as an example. I made what two blocks, excuse me, two blocks, two different colors. One's more of a gold color or an orange color and the other one's a yellow. It's all up to you what you want to do. And I'll, I'll uh, create some projects to pop these little blocks on, too, because I want to use them, just like you. I want to use these blocks, too. So, But it's not necessary for future projects to have them. All right, grab that later. So I'm telling myself, it's like a mantra for me. I'm telling you, but <laughs> it's because I've got to forget it. Oh, yeah, I don't sew it with it very much. So we have all the rows done. Now I'm going to make sure. Okay, this is my metal block. I'm going to finger press this. Oops. Yeah, that that bottom one. But I think that will come out on my, in my seam. I think the middle one is my trouble, trouble child here. 
one of the middle blocks. That's the top row or the bottom row. These two are the same. Doesn't matter. And there is the that one. And that one. So I have um, I have some seams going that way, some seams going the other way. So I'm just going to make sure they're all going the right direction. Make sure your iron steams it down. So I have that one going that way. And this one I need to go the other way. And I'm just going to get them in the right order that I need them. Now. Okay. Oops. Got it backwards. Did I... This is a step where I constantly... And you might too. I get confused. I could have just turned that around. But, you know, take your time. I'm not in a hurry. And Okay, so now all the seams have to go this way. So... I think when I pick it up, I twist it around. So I'm going to make sure I don't do that. And this just helps with nesting scenes. Okay. Oops. Backwards. Yep. And this one, they're going that way. They got to go this way. And this just helps for with the last step. And sometimes I, if I'm in a hurry, but this block is really tiny. I will just move the seam over to the right direction with my finger as I'm sewing. Yep. And now this is where I use pins. I need three pins per, oops, throwing some pins around. And I just right sides together, you know, put them together like that, making sure they nest. And so far, I'm enjoying that I can feel that seam is tight. When I did seam open, when I did the seam open, I don't think I was matching those seams as perfectly as this. And that's my fault. Uh, I, I know how to do it, but I might have been in a rush or just wasn't. And that happens to everybody. And that's when you stop. So I'm going to put that on my um, sewing uh, machine and let it wait for me for a second. And I'm going to pin these. I pretty much pin when I have multiple seams or if the piece is huge and I need to help holding it together. Like if I'm doing a border and I've, you know, got to get it on there right and I have to work ease into it as well. And ease is where you have one side of the fabric is not matching up to the other pretty much. The other side is too, you got a lot more bulk on one side and the other side is, is tighter. So you want to ease in the, t you know, the fabric that isn't quite matching. You're easing it in. Okay, I'm going to start with this one. Quarter inch seam. Stitch. And this little white featherweight is a cutie. It um, sews exactly the same as the black ones do. It's just manufactured later. Oh, I hope I didn't just run out of bottom thread, but I might have. It feels like I have. I don't. Yep, I did. All right, I gotta wind a bobbin, but I'm just gonna continue with this and I wind the bobbin. Okay, I right, gotta stop, wind a bobbin, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my bobbin wound, and now I'm continuing. I could tell by the sound that the bottom was gone. And that's what's really neat about these little little guys. I was telling my sister yesterday that uh, when I've 
sewn big projects on this little machine. I could go a long time. Like I did a jelly roll race, put all the um, um, pieces together, you know, on a big long strip. And then I like got almost all the way done. And then my bobbin ran out finally. I mean, it, it lasts a long time. It looks little, but it will, it will sew a while for you. Oops. Oh. See, that wouldn't have happened if I had just put my leader in. And see if I've got my stitch or if it's going to come out. There we go. There we go. Got my perfect. I just cut a thread. I didn't mean to. All right, now I'm going to iron these to one side. You could do this open. It would it would sit flatter, but it's up to you. You you decide. I'm gonna let the steam work on it. I'm also gonna hit it with a little tiny bit of starch. This is just best press. Let that make it go flat. <sighs> I'm going to set the seam first. Set the seam. Because when you're setting the seam, it warms everything up, makes everything ready to, to be ironed. I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of breast press. This block already looks a lot better than my first one. But you know what? That's okay. I, You know, that's where... It's made by you. There's little imperfections. If you look at antique quilts, they're, they're not perfect uh, by any means. Okay, so um, I've got these guys. Did I just? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> Making sure. All right, now I'm going to sew these two halves together. You get you get a little confused. You just take your time and re reposition everything. It's not not a raise. And put that put those seams together. I'm doing better with this. I did a lot of uh, opening, thinking that that would be an asset for me, but I think nesting seams is better for me on this at this point, but do what you, however you feel gives you more success. If you're used to doing one, one or the other more, you know, nesting or opening the seams, it's just do that. Okay. There is no pressure. Absolutely none. And I am getting hung up somehow. Somebody is not happy. I think there's a inside my there's a thread inside my foot that will not let go. There we go. And that will happen. So don't force anything. If it gets caught, just see where that thread is and cut it off. It takes some patience when you sew. So if you find yourself losing patience, that's when you need to quit. All right, I think we're all finished with this block. And I do think that this turned out a lot better than my first one. So that seam warms up the warms up all those fibers. That's why setting seam, they say set the seam. And then flip it over. And this will need a little trimming, it looks like, but not bad. It's a little, it needs a little squaring up. I'm going to hit just the light, light mist of this press. Okay, not much. And there we have it. There's our second block. And, um, yeah, that a lot of these look a lot better. This one has a little bit, but it's, it's a fish, so it goes into the corner, but all these look really good. If you get bothered by something like that, you can pick it out and redo it, but 
for me as a scrap block it's fine i mean because what you'll see visually is the fish swimming on that side it is a little but that's not bad i'm gonna turn it because it is a four and a half inch block um finished three and a quarter oops do not want to cut off those quarter inch seam allowances there and I just had a little bit peeking out right there and I'll just clean those edges up you don't have to sometimes I do sometimes I don't because what I'll do is I'll get that unevenness inside the seam the next time but if I'm doing like scrap blocks and I'm just, you know, one at a time making them, sometimes I'll square them all up just because I'm, and to be ready for the next thing. But this turned out really cute. These are cute little fish blocks and they'll go really cute with the ship blocks. You can like use the same color blue, but because I was out of the blue, I just used white. So, I mean, it's up to you. And it would be cute like if you wanted to make like a little bag you know, fish just swimming or, and then have a, have a ship up there. It, anyway, these are little blocks for you to use. Well, however you like, no pressure. We're going to have many more of them. All right. Well, we're done with the fish blocks. I have one set that is like a orange and then another set that's more yellow. And like I said, there's no pressure. You just use your scraps and just make a couple of these blocks. They're really little. I really appreciate you guys being here. Please like and subscribe. And uh, thank you for all your comments. Uh, keep them coming. I appreciate your, uh, your support. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.